Two years ago I walked down the stairs in my mum's house because I needed to make the pilgrimage through the living room to the kitchen to boil a cup of tea before bed. It was about 8 o'clock at night. My mum was sat on the sofa on her phone, TV on in the background and I thought, how can someone watch so much TV? Not that I'm crapping on the act of watching TV, it's just that whenever I've lived alone I've never felt the necessity to have one. If I'm being perfectly honest, it's because while living with my mum, I realised how easy it is to suddenly be enjoying, that, be having the time of your life while watching First Dates or The Great British Bake Off. And then just to reclaim the lost testosterone, I would go and do 10 pull-ups in the garden. <laughs> the pilgrimage from my mum, from the bottom of the stairs in my mum's house to the kitchen is about five seconds. And I made the pilgrimage, boiled the kettle, and I was waiting in the kitchen for the kettle to boil. A lot can happen within the space of 15 seconds, probably 20 seconds, because I'm not that quick at boiling the kettle. You can think about a past relationship, you can think about some mistakes you've made, or you can think about who would win in a fight, Hulk or Spider-Man? Probably Hulk. That, the adverts were on on the television. My mum wasn't watching anything in particular, so I thought something would pique my interest, so I peeked into the living room and started watching the TV as well. Adverts aren't usually that interesting, as you already know. Then an advert came on for a farmer's documentary. And the interviewer was speaking to a young British farmer. And I can't remember the question that the interviewer asked, but the farmer, amidst a backdrop of beautiful British countryside, said, live every day as if you'll die tonight, but farm as if you'll live forever. And it's this quote that I want to unpack with you. The kettle pinged and I thought, bloody hell, I'm not who I was before. So I went back upstairs and little did this farmer know that for the next two years, I have thought about this quote every day since. And like I said, it's this quote that I want to unpack with you today. This quote has been at the forefront of my endeavors in life and it's been a huge contributing factor to improvements in my mental health and if I may I would go so far as to say that this is the only quote you need to hear for the rest of your life let me explain how I interpret it there was a period in time in my life after hearing about this quote where for one week I can assure you that I le literally lived every day as if I was going to die that evening also with the second part of the quote in mind farming as if I will live forever. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. Dissecting the first part, live every day as if you'll die tonight. That one week is at the forefront of my memory because I felt such stillness, I felt such clarity, and I felt such necessity with the things that I was doing. I even bought myself a Memento Mori coin. Memento Mori translates from Latin into English as remember death. The way I conducted myself was with such a zen calmness that in the, for, in the front of my mind was, okay, I'm going to act today with the full awareness that I will go to sleep tonight and probably won't wake up. And then every day I woke up felt like a bonus. It's interesting that it only lasted for a period of a week. I think I became inattentive and allowed myself to drift away from the perspective. But whenever I think about that week, it was a standout state, mental state, philosophical state of awareness in my life. So the first part is quite simple. Live every day as if you will die tonight. This thing that you, there will be a last time for everything that you do in your life. The only objection you could have is inattention to what I'm about to what I'm saying to you with this point because we could all die tonight is a very is very much a cliche that we hear a lot of the time remember that we'll die we'll all die one day we live in a finite universe and death can come at any moment we think we understand it I'm going to speak for all of us here if I may we think we understand it but we really don't because we don't give ourselves the opportunity to meditate on death and actually imagine what it will be like and what it will feel like, mainly because we have no point of reference for death because we've never experienced it. So when you conduct yourself in the world as if you'll die tonight, you'll notice that 
things have more of a necessity and you're able to pierce through the things that you're doing with a inherent form of essentialism so focusing on what's essential rather than what is trivial because after this experience of having one week of really embracing death and the contentment and the stillness and the liberation that you feel from knowing and understanding philosophically I might die tonight in my sleep someone's going to come choke me <laughs> it brings you liberation because you're free from things that don't matter how often do we pass through life i'm going to get a bit i'm going to get a bit preachy <laughs> how often do we pass through life and feel a inherent bubbling resentment within because we're not focusing on focusing on our deepest truths and things that matter whether that be work whether that be your social group and people that you're hanging around so that's the liberation aspect aspect that you get from the essentialism of embracing death with your social interactions as well of course you might not want to speak so lovingly to people because you might need so solitude and you might not be able to or you might not have practiced vulnerability in a verbal sense of telling people what they mean to you every minute because the fear of that you could die at any moment. But what a good rule of thumb that I found with embracing this quote is speak to people in a way that if they did die tomorrow, you would be content with the last words that you said to them. Now, again, that doesn't mean you have to tell everyone that you love them because sometimes telling everyone that you love them becomes quite you become desensitized to the act of giving the verbal affirmation but speak to people in a way that you haven't left any open loop within the conversation knowing how to exit a conversation and in a loving compassionate and a direct way the second part of the quote which is what we will finalize here and i'll leave you to it wherever you are staves off the potential trap of taking the first part of the quote living every day as if you'll die tonight in the most hedonistic possible way that you could as in drink today for tomorrow we die let's amass all of the pleasures that we could possibly accrue and live them to their fullest because who cares about the hangover if tomorrow we die the second part staves that off because when you farm as if you'll live forever of course the farmer in the advert was literally referring to farming but how i interpret it is farming is in reference to the work that you do your purpose in life and the deep work that you focus on because in his book in his book the infinite game simon sinek distinguishes between finite games and infinite games you may have already heard of it I'll explain if I may. A finite game is something with a set amount of rules, defined players and it ends. So a game of football is finite because after 90 minutes it ends. Working on a project for a month is finite because after the month it ends. Anything with a clear beginning and end is a finite game. However an infinite game is something that you can't complete. And this idea of not being able to complete something is the farming aspect so an infinite game for example you cannot complete the game of marriage the game of marriage is to stay married you cannot complete the game of wealth because the idea of accruing wealth is to stay wealthy it's almost like setting a goal that you cannot achieve so then that gives you the continuous purpose and zen like clarity to calmly focus on it with each day knowing that you're not just rushing to achieve a short-term gain. You're allowing yourself the passage of time to commence forward and you're allowing yourself the philosophical understanding that things take the time they take so that you can allow the passage of time to unwind your purpose in life. So that is what stands staves off the potential hedonistic live to live for today to, for tomorrow we die idea because i have found it in the past i'll wrap this up now i have found in the past that whenever i'm focusing on something and i'm really really rushing it and i'm trying to achieve it as quickly as i can i never gain mental fulfillment from it maybe momentarily right you complete a degree and you feel ah oh, brilliant but then oh what do i do now 
you're playing a finite game of completing something. You cannot complete the infinite game of being a deep student because the idea of a, being a deep student or a forever student is to continue playing the game. So the last part awakens you to this infinite game mindset. So spiritually, philosophically, and in regards to your relationships, you live every day as if you will die tonight. Purposefully and professionally, you conduct yourself in regards to the gift that you are giving to the universe and to other people, as if you will be giving that gift forever. Across the biggest time frame, the most infinite time frame that you can possibly imagine. So we'll leave it there. On a mountain in Tenerife. It's not a mountain actually. Bloody hell, I'm English, so anything that seems quite high I think is a mountain. I'm actually on a hill. That's a mountain in the background. I'll show you the mountain and I'll say adios. Pero espero que estás bien. Con tu familia también. I'll show you. Adiós.